So they was, were the cybersecurity analysts that work for Google, and they posted today, which is how it's all come to light, but they actually discovered this vulnerability back at the beginning of the year. They told Apple on February the 1st, and by six days later, Apple had updated their software to fix it. Now, it's interesting because it's not the phones themselves that were hacked as such, it's websites, unnamed websites that received thousands of visitors every week. And when an iPhone that was vulnerable visited that website, essentially some sort of security implant could be implanted onto it by a hacker who could then access, and there's a long list, your contacts, your photos, your location, data from apps like iMessage, WhatsApp, Telegram, Gmail, Google Hangouts. And Google says that the group that were behind this we're there for about two years, a minimum of two years, they believe. And we just don't know what the scope of it is at this stage. But what's quite scary is how we're only finding about it now. And what we don't know, and there are so many questions and we haven't heard back today from Apple or Google, is, you know, was the data actually successfully stolen? If it was, what has it been used for? Is it still out there? Who was impacted? Was I hacked? You know, what were the websites that are named? We just simply don't know. All we can tell people at the moment is to make sure that your iPhone software is always up to date because Apple continually finds these security flaws. They patch them up. They put a new update out. This one was patched up in February. That was iOS 12.1.4. Right now, you should be streets ahead of that. If you go to your iPhone, go to your settings, go to general, about my iPhone, you should currently be on 12.4.1. What is so important to remember is we don't know what the security flaws are, are right now. They are continually being patched up. You don't want to find out months down the line that potentially your iPhone has been hacked because you didn't keep it up to date. Arxbridge in South Ryslip, a quiet suburban area in West London you probably haven't heard of. My name is Ali, I'm the local parliamentary candidate here, so I'm standing against Boris Johnson. Great, We're just you. going around saying hello to everyone. Fab, hello. But it could be a key battleground in the next general election. The residents here have the power to topple the Prime Minister. At just 25 years old, Ali Milani has been selected by the Labour Party to contend this area. Someone likes Boris. <laughs> yeah, make a note of the date and time. It'll go down in history. Milani's family moved to the UK from Iran when he was a young child. He lives here, he was educated here, he's worked here, and as a result, he thinks he can beat Boris Johnson. People here deserve leaders who understand what it's like to live like us. And Boris Johnson doesn't? And he doesn't, he doesn't. I mean, if you dropped him off at the end of the road, he wouldn't be able to find his way home. <laughs> Despite this traditionally being a conservative safe seat, Boris Johnson's majority halved in the last general election and Labour were hot on his heels. If Milani wins, he'll be the first MP ever to unseat a current prime minister. No one thought Brexit would happen. No one thought Trump would happen. Well, now I think it's about time that the biggest upset in political history actually opens the door for a positive uh, new era in politics. Taking a break from canvassing, we sit down to discuss some of Boris Johnson's controversial comments. To have an MP that writes such brazenly racist, offensive comments is shame for this community. Johnson has apologised for some of his past comments. However, he isn't the only one coming under fire for what he said. In the past, Ali Milani himself made anti-Semitic comments on social media. The comments you, you raised well, when I was a teenager and when I was very, very young, uh, that doesn't make them right. It's not an excuse. I have apologised. And actually, I've tried to take some really serious steps um, to rebuild trust. Uh, going on trips to Auschwitz and Birkenau, all the way to reaching out to the Jewish community, doing anti-Semitism training. Despite past controversy, Ali Milani is the Labour candidate. But do voters know who he is? No. No. Not especially, no. Clearly, Milani has more doors to knock on. He may not have Boris Johnson's celebrity. You think I need a haircut? I think people are looking through the door and not opening. I need a haircut. But he has plenty of charm. Must be the hair. If the residents of Uxbridge and South Ryslip would only open their doors to hear it. 89.